Hey guys, today we are talking about the Infinity Blade Trilogy, which are games filled with secrets and boast some of the best lore in the video gaming industry. That combo leads to the addition of many small details only those with very keen eyes will discover. So today, I'll be going over 15 tiny details you probably missed in Infinity Blade. The first of which comes from Infinity Blade 2. When you go to fight the stone demon for the first time, you will find yourself inside of a cave. If you look around though, you may just notice this isn't quite a natural cave. Above the stone mosaic, you will see that the cave wall is smooth rather than rocky. That's because this is actually the inside of the dam that the castle was built on. You can even see the braces that help support the wall. So originally, this wasn't a cave, but rather just the surface of the mountain. This minuscule detail really helps paint a picture of where exactly the stone demon is relative to the rest of the castle. Elsewhere in the Vault of Tears, there is a very memorable statue of a warrior fighting a dragon in the castle's main courtyard. Rested under the dragon is what seems to be a dragon egg. What's really cool is that if you revisit the Vault of Tears in Infinity Blade 3, you will notice that the egg at the bottom of the statue has been broken open. That's because this was a real dragon egg that one of the dragons in Infinity Blade 3 hatched from. And if any of you think this is a stretch, it was later confirmed in an interview with Donald Mustard. Dragons aren't the only form of wildlife we see in Infinity Blade though. Believe it or not, there are 8 different species of animals that appear throughout the second and third games. There are koi fish, which are found in the Pinnacle Monastery. Birds that resemble hawks circle around the top of the Vault of Tears as well as other castles. Seagulls fly over the lake in front of Larioth and other bodies of water. There is some type of strange insect that can be spotted flying around the hideout. Also at the hideout, there are fish in the water along the shore. There are butterflies flying around the plains of Koroth and inside the Vault of Tears. And finally, there are fireflies outside of the Vault of Tears in Infinity Blade 3. Infinity Blade isn't an open world game where you're supposed to set down your controller and take in the view, but if you do, you will see that there is a ton of care put into these environments. You might be saying, IBR, that was only 7 animals, what happened to the 8th? Well, the 8th is a bit more special than the others, so I want to talk about it in depth. When you are in the basement of the Broken Tower in Infinity Blade 3, you will see a window showing underneath the lake. If you wait a bit before fighting Thane or other enemies, one of two things can happen. A unique small fish can swim by the window, or an absolutely massive fish can swim by. If you aren't fighting when this larger fish swims by, it will actually activate a sound cue. That makes it the only animal to make a sound in Infinity Blade. Give it a listen. Speaking of the Broken Tower, there's another small detail hidden there. After you load into the mission and kill the first two enemies, take a look at the background behind the Broken Tower. Normally there's just terrain that we are never able to set foot on, but if you look really close, you can actually see the hideout across the channel. This works both ways because when the trader ship comes to dock in the hideout, you can just make out the Broken Tower in the background. So next time you go to the tower, see if you can see the hideout for yourself. Before we move on, there is actually another one of these cool details in Drem's Maw. After killing the first two enemies, look to the left and open the green chest. Doing so allows you to see the dark citadel in the distance. This is the first and only way we are able to view the full backside of the dark citadel. Speaking of background details, did you know that there are weather effects in Infinity Blade? Chair first implemented some of these effects into Clash Mob maps featuring rain and lightning. In addition, the Grassland map also featured fires on the ground. However, in Infinity Blade 3 they stepped it up a lot. All the skyboxes look much better. The clouds have different lighting depending on the time of day. They all move as they have in past games, besides at the hideout, for whatever reason. But Lalindri's temple has the best atmospheric details of all. 
The clouds there move faster because it's storming, and in the back of those storm clouds, you can spot lightning going off as well. When you are in the outside portion of this level, rain will hit your screen as if you're being rained on. There are even particle effects from rain hitting a pillar in the courtyard. While these details may go unnoticed by most players, they set an amazing atmosphere that is appreciated. Number 6. When you defeat enemies in Infinity Blade, their bodies simply disappear. But this isn't the case for every enemy. There is one whose body stays behind after defeating them. That body belongs to Sadie. If you move your camera to the right after killing Sadie, you will find her body laying right there on the ground. This is the only dead body in the entire trilogy that appears outside of cutscenes. By looking into the files, we can see that Cher actually created a unique model just for this detail to exist. Like Sadie's body, something else Cher gave special treatment to was the worker's trophy room in the Ark. While you're fighting your way to the worker, you have to pass through his trophy room of sorts. Along the walls are a few items being displayed one of which being a golden record. This seems to be the very same golden record that NASA launched into space on the Voyager spacecraft. By displaying this record, chairs nodding to the fact that the worker has been to space before. Like the worker, Radriar also has some possessions up on display in his castle, specifically paintings. At a glance, these paintings look like any other. But if you look closer at them, you will notice that most of them are of Radriar. That is noteworthy by itself, but three of these paintings are actually real life paintings with Radriar's head stuck on them. The first one of these we see is of Pope Gregory the Great, Church Father, as Radriar, followed by Napoleon I on his imperial throne, and then finally Napoleon in his coronation robes. Radriar is also depicted wearing different helmets in all of these paintings. It's possible that these helmets are older iterations of Radriar's armor set. Radriar has already switched up his armor once, just between the games, so he's probably done it before over the past 10,000 years. Speaking of Radriar changing his armor, have you ever wondered why it looks way more like the workers in Infinity Blade 2 and 3? In Infinity Blade Awakening, Radriar is just a little bit agitated after losing to Cyrus so he takes matters into his own hands. On page 33, or 42 depending on which PDF you read, it says, The God King stood up. Come. Twelve knights in black armor fell behind him as he strode from the room. It's time to pay a visit to the worker. During this visit, Radriar gets advice from him on how to make better armor, in turn making it look much more like the workers. Another thing I find fascinating in the Infinity Blade books is the final page of Infinity Blade Redemption. Not just the final page with words though, I mean past the acknowledgements and everything else until you get to the very last page. Rather than just being a blank white page like most books, it has a picture of an Infinity Blade map with a statue displayed on it. What's really cool is this very same statue exists in Infinity Blade 3. You can find it in the hideout, actually. Just tilt your camera up and it's right there, hanging off the side of the building. And just like how normal Infinity Blade maps work, by clicking on the statue you will get a reward of either an attack stat potion or an attack stat gem. Right below that statue is the map that Cyrus and Issa use for all their adventures. This map isn't just a fictional location though. By analyzing this map, we can actually figure out where Infinity Blade takes place relative to the real world. It may even look familiar to some, as it was based off the real world Mediterranean region. Looking at it side by side, you can clearly see the similarities. It does have some minor deviations, but that's excusable since the damage could have been far more severe. I mean, just look at the moon, it's literally shattered. It appears a lot of the world has undergone slight changes during the 10,000 years that passed before Infinity Blade takes place. It seems Chair really went all out with putting details in the hideout, because there's still another detail there. Every time you rebirth in Infinity Blade, you wake up in a respawn chamber. 
In the books, we always hear about how there are tons of buds or extra bodies that the Deathless can respawn in, but we only get to see them in Infinity Blade 1. Or at least, that's what I thought until seeing what's behind that foggy glass below the respawn chamber in Infinity Blade 3. It may look like nothing, but if we take a look into the game's files, we can see that there are actually bodies right behind that glass. So every time you die in Infinity Blade 3, no, that's where your new bodies are coming from. Something else you may not know about Infinity Blade 3 is why the Dark Citadel is partially destroyed. After beating Infinity Blade 1, the palace should be left in perfect condition, but upon your return to the Dark Citadel in Infinity Blade 3, you may notice that it's in shambles. What you may not know is that the castle wasn't destroyed by natural causes. In the book Infinity Blade Awakening, Cyrus was attacked by two golems in the castle. During their fight, the lift was broken, leaving it at the bottom of the shaft where it lies in Infinity Blade 3. Chair Studios remembered this great detail and made sure it was realized two games later. This next detail is actually from Infinity Blade Origins, the intro cinematic to Infinity Blade 3. It's right at the end of the cinematic when Cyrus is standing in the doorway approaching the worker. Before I point it out, I'm going to play the clip once so you guys can see if you can see it for yourselves. Did you see it? The doorway Cyrus is standing in is actually a huge neb shield from Infinity Blade 3. Neb spelled backwards is Ben, which is a tribute to Ben Hibben, the animation director behind Infinity Blade Origins and its character designs. All credit goes to Borealis on Discord for pointing this one out to me. For this final detail, we are going all the way back to Infinity Blade 1, which you may have noticed hasn't been mentioned at all throughout this video. That's mostly due to the fact that it was the first game and Chair Studios was just focused on getting it out the door with no extra time to make details. But it turns out there's a possible hidden detail within it. When you first encounter Elosium, he is reading a book. If we dive into the game's files, we can find exactly what book he was reading. It turns out it's called Island of the Lost Treasure, a story about why pirates bury their treasure and never reclaim it. What makes this book so interesting is that rather than being in Pangean, the only language we see in the games, it's written in English. This is the only time English is ever referenced in Infinity Blade 1. But it can make sense, assuming the scholarly Deathless King is old enough to be able to read English. The oldest Deathless are from an era where English was still being used over 10,000 years before Infinity Blade takes place. This could finally shed some light on why Elosium is called a Deathless King in the first place. Elosium is the only Deathless King whose origins aren't known. And if he's that old, there's a good chance that he was part of the Worker's Company as well. Some of you might say, this book is just from an asset library and has no further meaning, which is possible. But, to further solidify this theory, in Infinity Blade 3, the Worker has this very same book displayed in the Ark alongside the Golden Record. Again, this isn't confirmed, but I think it's enough proof to at least entertain the theory. So those were 15 tiny details from Infinity Blade. Hopefully I was able to show all of you something you didn't know about the games. If you could, please leave a comment below on which detail you were most surprised by. Also, if you know of any details I didn't cover, please leave a comment with them. I would love to make another one of these videos, but I don't have quite enough details yet. And real quick, this video has taken me over 9 months to make. During that time, I have learned Premiere Pro, read both Infinity Blade books, played the games multiple times, rewrote my script, re-recorded audio files, had a filming mod made, and even tried my hand in Blender, all to make this video as good as it can possibly be. So, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you went down and subscribed to my channel. I have many more plans for this channel that I hope to get out quicker now that I have all of these new skills. Lastly, I want to thank Borealis and Nico for their huge help in making this video. Anyways, have a good day and thanks for watching.